What's up dogs and welcome to the next tutorial. For this one, we're gonna be learning about switches, self switches, and variables. Three very important things that you will need to really grasp and understand in order to make an RPG horror game. I'll be honest, this is like the number one thing you will need to learn to really get you started in making something. Once you can grasp this idea, you're pretty much good. So if you need to rewatch this video a couple of times to really let it sink in, but by all means. Also, I don't know if you know about this just yet, but I have all the details timestamped below in the descriptions. So please, use that as a guide when you need to. By the way, just to quickly plug in, I'm currently making a game called Caster's Trap. It's a puzzle horror game that combines magic and the supernatural. I'd appreciate it very much if you gave the Instagram a follow. Also, check out some of my vlogs. Now, with the tutorial. So now let's play with a few other mechanics. Let's head on over to the small room. Alright, so now let's say that this door somehow becomes locked and the player cannot leave unless they enter a sort of code. So in this portion, it's going to be a little bit complicated because we're going to tackle switches, variables, and self-switches all at once. So feel free to pause and repeat sections of the video if you need to. So now I'm going to just go all the way up top here and enter some text. Where the player is saying, Huh? The door is locked. Is it okay? And then in the next text, I'm just going to control copy and control V to paste, and then hit space so that it keeps the face asset and keeps the name code down here. And then in this line, he's going to say, There's a passcode system to the left. Should I try it? And then clicking here, there's going to show choices, yes or no. And in the yes, we're going to have the player input a number. And we're going to keep it at variable one. And this is digits. One is, of course, the ones, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands. Typically, most people use the thousands. So we'll keep it as the thousands and hit OK. Then at this point, we want to create a conditional branch. So double click this and go over to flow control, conditional branch again. And we will want variable. And we want to enter a specific code. Um, just choosing an arbitrary number. I kind of like 6969. Completely arbitrary, by the way. And we'll want to hit OK. Now I'm going to take all of this and hit control cut and control paste to put it in here. Now I want you guys to try and figure out why I decided to do that. And if you don't know, just follow the flow of the contents. So it goes through some text, then it shows a choice to insert number, and then your player actually inputs a number, and then it will check if that number is correct. And if it is, then the player will leave. And that's why we do it this way. But before that, I just want to enter more text. So I'm going to copy and paste it on over, hit space to edit, highlight all of this, and then change it to, I did it! What a significant and arbitrary code! Before we hit OK, I want you guys to notice something by hitting Preview. I'm going to bring this down. So whenever you have a face asset like this, it's actually going to push the text on over. So over here, you're going to see that it's already at its outer wall. But over here, it looks like it has so much space. So I really highly recommend that you use Preview very often when you have somewhat lengthy text. And you can actually see that there's a line over here. And this line is to tell you where it's supposed to cut off, but of course in our case, it didn't actually cut off. But just in case for other people's screens, I will hit enter just to bring it over to the next line right there. And now it looks a little bit cleaner. Now as the player says that, I want a sound effect to play. So I'm going to just take this, copy, paste it over, and then edit it by hitting space. And I guess I want a sort of chime something that sounds like I got it correct I like this computer sound effect so I'll select that one and apply so now when I actually play the game and I get it correct it's gonna play the sound effect play this and then move me through and to me that sounds pretty good now what I want to do before continuing is of course name the variable and I forgot to do this before I don't know why I did <laughs> so let's give it a name and I'll call this one small room door code by the way you can use spaces I'm just the type of person who doesn't like to use spaces and I'm hit okay 
So now you're going to see that it edited all the other variable ones locations. Now you're going to notice something. What if we got the code wrong? And clearly we don't have any code for that. So we want to highlight the conditional branch, hit space, and then click on this little tab here, and then OK. And then for when we get it wrong, all we want to do is play a sound effect and add some text. So let's grab this and this, control copy, control paste it in the else branch, and let's first start by changing the text to, oh man, out of all the numbers in the world, what could this number be? You know, and change the sound effect to instead be a buzzer. So that sounds incorrect. Cool. So now we got all of this coded out. Except it's not done yet, but we'll step away from it so we can actually give the player this code somewhere in the room. I'm thinking in a journal of sorts. So I'm going to double click that to open this up. And then clicking on the image, scrolling all the way down, and we go to tile set C, and we'll want this book. And I also want the direction to be fixed, otherwise you're just going to get some weird stuff when you interact with it. Trust me. <laughs> Let's go on to contents and then say that the code, and you can get descriptive with this. You can try and create some sort of riddle, but I'm going to just be straightforward and say that the code is 6969. Preview it, and that's it. And let's add some color just to make it a little bit more special. I'm thinking red is fine. Apply, and this works. Except I want it to be a little bit more extravagant. Let's say that the books first actually starts off close, and you have to pull a switch in order for the book to open. Who knows, maybe it's made out of metal and it's actually just all computerized. I don't know, it makes no sense. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I think it works out very, very well. I'm gonna hit OK here because I don't wanna jump too far ahead. And over here, I'm gonna create a switch. By double clicking here, going down to where it says switch. And I'm gonna keep that red one, hit OK. And of course we want direction fix on, apply. So I'm gonna add some context with a text using our good old buddy read a switch what could this do and I want to change the name to switch and I probably also want to change the name of this to book alright let's go back to our switch and let's edit the text a lever what could this do should I pull it alright so that's the subtext I got and of course, we'll want to make another show choice of yes or no. Apply. And if he pulls it, then we're going to create a sound effect. That sounds pretty good for a switch. So again, if the player pulls the switch, then we need to animate it. Go back to page two, set movement route, this event, turn left, wait three, turn right, wait three, turn up. And at the very top, we want to make sure that direction face is off, and we want direction face to turn back on. OK, and apply. And then at the very end, let's also add a little more context. And then he says, I think I did a thing. <laughs> Reed's a really smart guy, ain't he? So I want to make sure that this lever allows this book to open. So how do I do that? That's was what's known as a switch. So we'll go back to page one, go to game progression, control switches, click this, and let's give it a description. I'll call it lever book. <laughs> By default, all the switches we create is at off. So we'll want to turn this on. And very similarly, all the variables are at zero, such as the code at the 6969 door. So we're not done with this lever. Kind of like the chest, we need to finish up and clean this out. So let's copy this over and paste it. And in the conditions, we're going to hit switch and lever on. And in this case, the image will instead be all the way to this side. Oh, I just realized it doesn't need a face up. <laughs> let's edit that. Go back to page one, set movement route, and delete this, delete this, 
And it turns out we can actually also delete this. The reason why we could delete the direction fix on is because we're going to switch on over to a brand new page based on this control switch and the conditions met here. And in the options, this also has a direction fix on, so it will automatically turn on the direction fix. So we're just going to change a few things here, and I'm going to change the text from a lever, what could this do, into, I think I'm finished with it. But should I still pull it? And if he hits yes, then instead we're just going to reverse the animation. So remember, we deleted this on the other page. We still want direction fix off to be on the top so it can animate. So right now it's currently facing right. So we could delete this. We want it to face left and then face down. And let's change some text to say, well, I pulled it, and instead of on, this will be off, and okay. So for me, because of my experience, I have a recognition on how all of this works, and I could continue to work until the very, very end. But for you guys who's just starting out, I would highly recommend that you do test the process as we go through this tutorial series, and to test often when you're making your own game. That said, I'm going to hit okay. So now let's go back to the book. Now I want this book to be open only when that lever is pulled. So we will want to go to switch and go to lever book. So now the book is open and can be read when the lever is pulled. However, what if when it's not pulled? Then of course we'll want to create a copy of this, paste it over, but instead of editing this page, we'll want to edit page one. Because remember, when RPG Maker starts and the player is playing the game, the map will actually look to the latest page of the event to see if the conditions met. And if it is, then this will be the active event. But if it's not, then it'll move down to the page below it and do the same thing to check if this will be the active event. If nothing's active, then of course, nothing will be there. So we're going to edit this. And this one will have no conditions. And we're going to go to this image and switch it to a book that looks closed. We want all of these options to remain the same. Priority could instead go to same. And we'll actually want that for this priority as well. Head on back over to tab one. And let's change the text to read. Hmm. I can't seem to open this book. Am I really just that weak? And then, nah, it's probably being held by some mechanism. <laughs> what a character, ain't he? Except now I'm going to show you some text code to give this a little bit more spice. So let's go over to hmm and add a text code. If we hold it, we'll see all of our text code. And the one I want is backslash period, which is wait one fourth of a second. So let's instead wait half a second in a cumulative, so we could do that. Then we'll do it again here. Oopsies. And then he's going to exclaim. And then instead, let's wait for a full second. Just again to show you the code for that. That's one full second. If you're curious on which one this is, it's shift backslash for me, probably for you as well. Then he'll say all of that, except I want this text to be tinier. So I'll do backslash close bracket. And we can preview this. <laughs> so adorable. Close it. OK it. If we actually want to see it in action, Control R or right click to test. Hmm, I can't see you open this book. Am I really just that weak? Nah, yeah, it's probably being held by some mechanism. <laughs> nice. In apply in OK. So there's still one last thing we have to do, and that's going over to here. What if the player enters the room? and then wants to leave the room. Oh, well, now he'll go through the same command. And that makes no sense because he already solved it, right? 
So let's go all the way to the process where he does solve the room, which is right here. This would be the next line. What we we'll want to make is a self switch. Again, self switch are private, whereas normal switches are public to everything else in the engine. Self switch, just a particular event that it shares throughout all of its pages, switches everywhere. So let's go to control self switch and we're going to control. Let's choose A. It does not matter which one you choose. Hit apply. And then we we'll want to create a new page. And for this one, it will be self switch. We also want to make sure that the priority is on same. And because we chose A, that turns on over here, we'll keep it as A over here. But this time we don't want him to jump through the same commands. So instead we just want him to teleport on out, which are these three lines. So control C to copy, hit on over page two, control V to paste, and now we're all set. Let's just hit okay. And now I will finally officially test play the entire game. Before that, I just want to double check the priority on this one that is on same and that is on same. Awesome. So here I am, I'm going to test out this door. Oh, barnacles, I need to find the key. Oh, what's this? I got a key! Oh, yeah, it works. <laughs> and then he tries to exit. Huh? The door is locked. There's a passcode system to the left. Should I? And look at that. I didn't preview the text, and it cuts off. So I'm going to fix this right away and jump us straight back to where we were. Where we were. All right, so now we're trying to leave. Huh? The door is locked. There's a passcode system to the left. Should I try it? No. And then he just exit. And then you can try again. Yes. And this is what we get. And I don't know what the code is. Could it be uh, this significant number? Ah oh, man, out of all the numbers in the world, what could this number be? All right, well, let's make this book. Hmm, I can't seem to open this book. Am I really just that weak? Nah, it's probably being held by some mechanism. <laughs> but if we pull this, a lever. What could this do? Should I pull it? I think I did a thing. And you'll notice that there's a little bit of a lag there, and we're going to fix that in a second. The code is 6969. But just to finish carrying this out, I think I'm finished with it. But should I still pull it? Well, I pulled it. And again, you notice that lag. But... We know that this works. Awesome, right? And now we can try this door. And the code is, in fact, 6969. I did it. What's significant in arbitrary code? <laughs> if we try to go back through it, he will now just completely teleport out. Ta-da! All right. One thing I noticed is that I didn't put the trigger on player touch. Personally, I do like action button. That's how I like to stylize my game. But you could also change it to player touch. Event touch, auto run, and parallel. Don't worry about those right now. We'll get to that in a later part. For now, I'm going to put it back to player touch. And then just to fix this, we want to put this lever before the text that we have there. And likewise is true over here. So now that when we test it, you just notice that everything works out, right? Cool. If there's anything to learn from this mistake, it was that the order of operations or commands really does in fact matter. So there you guys have it. A little bit tricky, but once you get more used to it, especially through repetition, you guys will really get this down. Conditional branching is really the sequence involved with making an RPG Maker game work. So once you get that, you'll be really, really solid. In the next video, we're going to be learning about the other ways to trigger an event. So specifically, auto run, parallel process, and event trigger. Also, if you find this video and the series to be very helpful, I'd appreciate a like so very, very much. And lastly, I'm creating a game called Caster's Trap. It's actually a remake to a version that I made back in 2014. So if you're interested in playing that one, it was made on VX Ace. But you can check out the vlog 
if you are interested in seeing how that game is going. I'm learning new things myself, particularly with pixel art and digital art. I find that one of the greatest things about being a developer is that there's always room for you to grow and expand your horizon. Be it an engine like RPG Maker or even Unity. Trust me, the opportunities is really endless. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, ladder.